So even though it's technically two days late, the folks came in. Not only was it like a, a nice little streak of the day after I ordered the books, from now they came in. So it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Seven days straight of getting books. But they also came in like a bunch, much earlier than I thought they would. So what, the last one that came in today said arriving July 5th to 10th. And it was kind of, it seemed a little bit longer than it should have. And it was, according to Amazon, it was shipped by a different, no wait, that was a different one. I mean, it started out as it, I don't know. But it was, this, it was, a, it was like the, uh, shipped by blank. And it was one that I don't really recognize. It wasn't USPS, even though it was USPS. What's funny is that Amazon is so far behind. They still haven't um, said it's. I didn't even say it's out for delivery. I, I obviously got it. And that's why I'm glad I, I had the USBS tracking. So I, I would have broken up today. Even more upset than I woke up today. Um, TLDR for that. I had woken up and I hadn't checked my emails. I started checking them at 8 o'clock last night, but I hadn't. And they had a survey from Knowledge Panel. I was supposed to take surveys from to get money from. And I could have gotten 4,000 points. They're like, sorry, this one expired. I was like, damn it. Thankfully, it wasn't like a huge one. It was 20,000 points. I probably would not have been here right now. If that had happened, I would not have been able to live, my, live with myself at that point. But it's just 4,000 points. I, 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 I uh, emailed them. I was like, can I still get it? Can I, can I still take the survey? And I was hoping they would let me do it. Like, they'd have like a whatever the hell you want to call it. Where te te technicality, they could give me it, but they couldn't. But anyways, on to the books. Uh, now, as I've mentioned before, some of these are Amazon. Oh, I, I mentioned it. They're USBS. Um, but some are Amazon. Now, I have to, because I, I'm going to be filming the complete June haul, I have to take out Silver Coin and Dilly's Bouquet, because I got them before now. Yeah, I'm, I'm filming them both back to back. You'll get that video tomorrow. I, I don't want to upload both. Nor do I want, because I have so, many, so much to show you. Nor do I want to, um, just do it all in one. So as far as up, I was extremely disappointed with the dimensions of this book. Now, if it had been the size of, say, that Nowheresville book that I got, or the size of that, or even the size of something of Hitler, it was a hard, 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 hard cover. I don't know why I was like, do, 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 do. No, it was a hard cover. Then I guess I wouldn't have minded, but this, I wouldn't have minded, but this one is just officially the smallest dimensions I've ever owned for a graphic novel, and that is Eric Stevenson, Eric Stevenson, yeah, Eric Stevenson's Long Hot Summer. Now, if I, I wish I had, and I wish I had, I don't, I don't know why, but I hate, I hate, it sounds so childish to say I wish, but not only is this, the dimensions, like, the height is smaller than every, and, and, and every, than any graphic novel I have, but it's also shorter, so I put it on the shelf, you can't even see it. It is the most, like, why did they even do this? It's so annoying, like, why didn't you, at, at the very least, uh, make it the size of, like, your, like, the Nowhere Soul one, and, and, uh, no Norway, and, um, the, I'm, I'm looking at right now, uh, the, the other one I got, the Health Book, Health City, like, those ones are perfect, because they're, yeah, they're smaller size, they're size of, like, I want to say a novel, like, a, a regular novel, but I think this is the size of a novel. And that's fine not in that case, but and I can still read it just fine, but it's like why not just make it the size of if you if you want to make it smaller, then why not make it the size of all the others you have? <coughs> and I had given back that four letter worlds book because it was the same dimensions, I think the same exact dimensions as this book. It's like that's too small for me, I don't want that. And th even then I was like, you know what, I want this book in sex, so I kind of exchanged it for it, if anything. And then they had an Eric Stevenson book in there, story in there. But I keep having to remind my I should keep reminding myself that this is not the only Eric Stevenson like as of this and the other three that I got, it's not all Eric Stevenson did for image comics. He actually did a lot of young blood back in the day, but there's no trade of that, so I didn't get it. There's also another series by an author that I did the same thing for. And I honestly went by what I'm gonna call the Eric Stevenson rule. In that, yeah, I do wanna get everything they've done for Image Comics. That's kind of a, that's, that's how I am. It's one of my little, like, weird little ticks. Uh, but... Train of thought is, train of thought is, just, train of thought just like the building. Um, the point. But yeah, Long Hunt Summer, it's an OGN all-in-one Oh, so I want to get everything that author has done for Image Comics, and obviously the entire series, 
It's one of those stigmas. It's a weird little, I don't want to say stigma, but a weird little tick of mine. But I do have certain exceptions. And now I'm going to go by what, what's called the Eric Stevenson rule. And that if everything else is out of print, especially a series that volume one and two may be in print, but volume three and onward is like infamously out of print and pay 30 bucks over $15, above a $15 trade, I'm going to say, hell no, I'm not going to get that right now. Or if, it or if it doesn't seem like it's, they don't even have the entire series in trade format. But yeah, Long Hot Summer, uh, drawn by Jerry, 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 why am I stuttering so bad right now? Uh, drawn by Jimmy McKelvey. And there's no colorist because it is in black and white. And again, I don't, like, it's not something I would sell it, like, I get it back, like, no, I don't want this. Um, the only reason why, I, I did it for, like, Four Letter World, just one of those books that I was like, why did I even get this? I got it for the 10-page story that Jeff Parker did, or, and then, of course, now, a 10-page story that Eric Stevenson did. Like, even then, I wouldn't be like, 20 pages, eh. I might change my mind, but for now, this isn't, this is the only short book I have. Next one up is another Eric Stevenson book, I should probably put them together. There. And all of these I have read before. This is. I, I like doing the thing where. Um, and this, I have actually I have it on my, my, on my on my notes app in my phone. Of er, so now every month from now until the end of the year, at least one to two books will be, at least two books will be, uh, ones I've read before. My library had them. I liked them so much, or they're significant enough that I want to own them. There are a few exceptions. One, I'm going to get another series by the author. I didn't like the other series I did that much, but honestly, it's actually my life a lot more. But I still want to own it. But for the most part, it's a series I liked. Now, this first one I thought was pretty good, but not his best. And this is not as good as the other one was. And this is Nowhere Men, written by Eric Stevens. Volume 1, Fates Worse Than Death, written by Eric Stevenson, with art done by Nathan... Bellegarde and colored by Jordi Belair, who honestly, if she get, if she's going by page rate, she must be one of the most uh, sought after colorists in the comic book community. Cause she has a lot of coloring for her comics. She must have been a, she must have been a big fan of coloring books when she was a kid. Um, now this one had a lot of like I don't, don't want to say back matter, but a lot of this stuff. And I, I remember when I was reading it for the first time. I think after a while, I just gave up. I was like, you know what? I'm not reading this. Skipping it. Um, and it's the same with Last God. The first time I read Last God, um, actually, you do know, you, do, you guys do know I'm, re I'm reading. I'm ready. I'm reading it again because I um, I filmed some videos ahead of time. Like one video I filmed, I filmed ahead of time, like so far ahead of time that it was like when I was filming that other video. It was back to back. Uh, so I was like, wait, I can't am I reading Last God now or later? But no, I'm reading it now. So you guys know I'm reading Last God. And they have, at the end, they have just a bunch of, like, like I just showed you, which is all text and then no artwork. So it's more like, oh, I just had it. I just had it. She just had it. It's more like this. Not all of that. Thankfully, it's not that long, but basically all of that. And it's kind of annoying. But for Last God, it's just a few pages. And while it does take me a lot longer to read it, it's not as long as it could be. It's fine. I show you the artwork. I'll show you a better page for the artwork. But this one was pretty. This one was pretty interesting. I, I don't remember liking it over. Uh, overall, I remember thinking it was all right. Not thinking it was the best thing ever. Um, but I still want to own it. Also, it's ten dollars for a thick trade like this, so you can't go wrong. Now, this one and the next series, and I, I might as well put the other. So there's three series total that I got this month that. They didn't complete the run. Like, they, it got canceled prematurely. So the next volume did not come out. So volume two of Nowhere Men ne never got released because of the issues, they weren't enough. I think it was nine in total? No, it was 11. And this one collects one through six. So they just it needed one more issue. And at the very least, they could have done seven to 12. So I, I had to get those on the Kindle. So the Kindle, as far as Kindle went, I spent more on the Kindle. It was thirty bucks total, than I have in a long time. Uh, almost forty because I I I broke even. I got some more Kindle books, so it was almost forty dollars. That's a lot for Kindle books. 
I definitely got my three bucks, my, my three dollar kilo credit, which is awesome because there was a. Although even then, I was like, "What am I gonna get?" And there was one that I could have gotten. There was a series that I don't think is included in the trade. Not one of these. But it, it's actually one of the last one that you see, uh, which is very significant. So stick for that. But anyways, no worm man. This next series is the one that I liked a lot more than Nowhere Man, and just liked in general. I thought it was a very good series, and now I can I can at least finish what has been what has been, what has been released so far. I think will be released. I think the last thing, if I'm not mistaken, the last issue he wrote, I think was his series, and it was back in 2017. I think Eric Stevens tends to focus on being the editor in chief than to focus on these comics. And this series is They're Not Like Us, Volumes 1 and 2. Now, why did it take so long to get this? Well, I completely forgot about this series. And I was watching the image. I like watching this very well done mini duck. It's like eight minutes. It's on their YouTube channel. I think if you just go to their homepage, it's right then and there. It's like one of their, one of their featured videos called I Is Her Image. Let's do I Is Her Image, Image Comics on YouTube. You'll find it right away. Very, very nicely done. Um, Mini doc that I hope they are as passionate as they seen in the in their, little, in their mini interviews because they, they, do, they do a damn good job of selling image comics. Yeah, you know, Kelly Sudeconic is on there and you know, whatever the hell, but I mean, Robert Kirkman's there too. And they, they all seem very passionate about their work. I think at the very least, you gotta give them that. You know, so what if they say something I, that pisses me off too and they say something really bad on. Twitter, they get into fights with people, and they, like, they call them out, and they, like, hate the fans, basically, like that, but hopefully the fans, they, they appreciate, they at least appreciate some fans, and not just the ones that attack others. Anyways, and I don't think, even, I don't think Kelly Sue DeConnick has said anything. She just said that, if you don't like my politics, don't buy my books, which, yeah, is kind of a bad thing to say, but it's not like she's attacking anyone, any individual. A group, sure, but not any individual. So, at least there's that. Sure, the group doesn't... Sure, the group gets a bad rap for no fucking reason, but... That's her. Anyways, they're not like us, volume one. Uh, Black Holes for the Young collects one through five, I believe. It's a much shorter trade than is for Nowhere Man. So, Nowhere Man, so it makes sense. Where is it? There it is. No, one through six. It actually is one through six. Huh. That's kind of funny. Same amount of issues, and this, one, this one's 144, and that one's 184. So 40 more pages for Nowhere Man. And it's kind of funny, because I saw this one, I was like, when it came in, it came in through Amazon, and they put, like, they put a box in there. I had, they tried to make it fit, like, and they didn't, like, just put it in the box and then just say that's the end of the day. They tried to have some padding, but the padding fell out, so it was on the top of the book. Um... So I was like, oh, damn, what if, it, what if some of the pages fell out? And I was, I I'd actually had to look it up on Amazon. I was like, nope, it's just 144 pages. I don't know why I thought it was 184. This one is I really liked. From what I can remember, it starts out, actually, it seems like it does start, yeah, it starts out with her wanting this character here, uh, wishing to commit suicide. And then she gets, like, inducted into basically the Doom Patrol. The best comparison I can make is to Doom Patrol. For, again, from what I remember, it's been a little while since I've read this series, but I recommend it. If you, feel like, if you like Doom Patrol and you want something that feels even more indie, pick this up. But don't be disappointed that it hasn't completed its, its run. Because it's, I think it ever will. Uh, so it's written by Eric Stevenson, colored by Jordi Belair, and Phonographics does the lettering again. However, it's the penciler is Simon Gain. And I like this, honestly, for Eric Stevenson, I think Simon Gain should always partner up with him, because I think that fits his overall, like, theme a lot more than did Nowhere Man. Not, like, to a, not to an insulting degree. I think Nate Belgrade did fine. You know, even when I was reading Nowhere Man, I couldn't complain, but still. Uh, same creative team for Volume 2, and it's Us Against You. And that, this one collects 7 to 12, I believe. And, yes, I know, I, I'm also, whenever I hear it, they're not like us, I also go to that. My, my also goes right to the Kendrick Lamar Drake thing. I do want to listen to that now. I think I should. I'm not a big fan of drama between people I don't care about, but, yeah, 7 through 12.
why might I check it out? Like, I, I'm a fan of John. I'm a very, I, I am a gossip girl. I, whenever I hear something about someone, I, I want to, like, I, I, know, I know, I'm like, what's going on? Like, there was something that was happening for someone. And usually, like, I get the, like, the, the updates on this person. But I didn't this time for some stupid reason. I, actually, well, I did. Like, they were talking to someone else, and I got the gist of it. But it was kind of, like, it's annoying. No. But I, I'm cute. And I don't do anything with it. I don't go to my friends and, like, oh, guess what she just said. No, I just I keep it in here. And I only tell the people that aren't going to, I know for a fact, are not going to tell anybody else. You know? I'm not going to do a Gossip Girl, guess what happened on here. No, I'm not going to do that. I, I, I mean, I, I just kept it very vague of what I was talking about. But I am a Gossip Girl. Gossip Boy sounds weird. And I'm, I, I'm, if anything, I'm referencing the show. I know I'm not a girl. I'm not, I'm not one of those people. I shouldn't say it like that. But now it's not, now it's not Pride Month, so I can. Uh, Andy Watson does... Andy Watson writes and Simon Gain draws Sunburn. Another series I've read before. This one I thought was alright. You know, I thought it was... It, it kept my interest. Um, but when I... Flipping through it here, I remember it, um, it looks like it was pretty quick, but it is a very thick book. It's one of those things. Here, this. Here's the artwork. Um, but, and also it's a very thick book for only 20 bucks. And I will always give Image Comics props and always will support thick ass books for a cheap ass price. So, that was one of the reasons why I got this. Now, I got this used very good. And used very good. This is the reason for why I am fine with sacrificing use very good. Because so I want to get this one, I was like, you know what, it's the only Simon Gain book I need. Um, usually I don't do artists, I usually do authors. But I was like, you know what, might as well get this one. I, I, was, I was thinking of getting this one anyways. Because again, it was a book that library had and I wanted to own myself. So I, I was thinking of getting it anyways, so I was like, you know what, let's get it. But this is why I like use very good is because you can tell there is a difference between a significant difference between use very good and use like new there's a little scuff here and up here there's a little scuff there but all of that is fine because when i'm reading the book itself i'm not going to notice that at all unless i'm really careless with it and that's my fault because i'm being more careless with it than i should be just in general like I'm so like I'm so careful with my books that if I never made that like that marking that I'll show I'll show on Crisis right here, um, this little marking here that I make on books unless there's not unless that's not there on the book, the ones that I own I use a bookmark myself. I just ordered too much my li local library to do that, you know to use bookmarks and it's a library copy. I hate to say it, but after a while the library copy is gonna break down. It's gonna get ruins anyways, whether or not it's the person's, the lender's fault, or it's because the book's been there forever. I've got, I've had books, there's books that I can show you guys if I ever did like, a tour of my library, that they've had since like the early 2000s, or mid to late 2000s maybe even, um, and those are like in terrible shape because of how long they've had it. So many people have read it that, you know, that's what happens with books, especially with soft covers. That's why I don't feel as bad. Yeah, part of me is like, you know what, maybe I should, but I don't have enough bookmarks to, ju to justify that. Even with the books that I own, it's gonna be hard to do that with the ones that I had, that I'm reading. I think I only had like two left. And it's nice that uh, Wonder Book, the one, one of the third party sellers, does give you a bookmark. Yeah, it's one per order, so you can order 4,000, you can literally order 40 books from them, and you're only gonna get one bookmark, unless they give you two boxes. I wanna try that now. Order a bunch from Wonderbook to where they had to give me two boxes and see if they give me one bookmark per box. But no, I, I don't think it matters. I think it's one per order. Which kind of sucks. What if you're getting them for, like, what if, you get, what if you get 40 books and it's for the classroom and you want to get at least two per box, one per box, you know? Okay, classroom, you got only two people are going to get it, but still. Yeah, I want to try that now. Not next month. It'll be like, hate to say it, but next year. But anyways, Sunburn. I remember being pretty, it was kind of, it was very, like, la not lackluster, but very kind of, like, she goes to a summer home, she likes these people, she has a very nice time, she meets a boy, I believe. It was very, um, not cut and paste, but, you know, like, easygoing, kind of, like, monot- like, border borderline monotonous. Now, on to the other series that I had to get the... 
final five issues. And this one pisses me off because this one only collects five. Oh yeah, uh, better way sunburns no OGM. And this one pisses me off because they couldn't make a volume two with the last five issues, but they didn't. And yeah, I know I'm finally getting on the Kindle. I'm not one of those people that, that, that I'm not one of those people that it keeps me up at night. That oh my god, they're gonna get rid of the book. That could happen any day now, even right now. No, no I know it can happen, but for the most part, I'm buying. Kindle, uh, buying uh, Kindle comics from publishers that will never go out of like m maybe twenty years from now they will. But even then, like like for a good example is Conan. When Marvel lost the license, I can still read the Conan books I have on the Kindle. I'll double check and I'll say anything in, in the comments if I can. But I can still read the Conan books. So I don't understand why people are so. I know when they move. They, I know that has happened before. A good example is on Comixology, like they, they chipped it to like it was all on Comixology, and they did maybe an update or something like that, and some comics were lost. I wonder if that's I wonder if it's updated now. If they've been able to get them back. I'm sure if you emailed them, they would. But uh, even then, people weren't getting responses back. Um, but because I get everything on the Kindle itself, especially these days, I've had no problems with that. I had one minor hiccup where I thought I had my Marvel Unlimited app uh, merged with Kindle, and I got because I got a bunch of points for doing little surveys on the Marvel app, um, the Marvel Insider. I'm a Marvel Insider, and I got a I actually got Bishop's Crossing X Men Epic Collection. Did not show up on my Kindle for whatever reason. I don't know why, because I had I thought I had it merged. In fact, in fact, I know I did. But anyways, on to the other series that I had to get the last five issues on the Kindle. The Warning, Volume One, written by Edward, written and drawn by Edward LaRoche. Yep, creator, writer, and artist, but color is done by Brad Simpson, who sounds very familiar. Not just because his last name is Simpson, but just in general, his first name too, first name last name. Here's the artwork. Uh, this one was like sci-fi esque, and what's kind of ironic is the next one they made a comparison to Annihilation, which is a sci-fi. So I mean, it's a big fan of sci-fi. Edward LaRoche is. And it's a funny thing I saw in the back here. I, I, I chuckled at that. That twenty two nine sticker. The other times I had stickers that have the their their pricing, their own uh, custom pricing. They've always been under what I paid, including shipping at the very least. When you include shipping, it's under what I paid. That's a, that's another thing I, I wonder. Like if I go to the wonder wonder book is a bad example. They're always free shipping, but half price books. If I go to half price books, that actual place. In that case, if, I don't know if it's a shipping code, is it actually two bucks and they include the shipping and it's, and it's the official, like, full price? That's what I wonder. Or if I, and, and also, also, if I go to the actual half price books, there's a bunch of half price books I have ordered from. There's half price books Blue, half price books Ink, half price books Ruby, which I hate. Hate, hate, hate Ruby. Both times I ordered from Ruby, I've had problems with them. The most recent time, it's honestly, it was the. It, it wasn't totally their fault, but it was also a bit longer, I believe. But in the first time I ever ordered from them, they lost my address. They're like, uh, what's your address again? We delivered to, uh, this place. Not this place. And it's like, okay, it's not that far off, fine. It's not way over in Hawaii, thankfully. It's, it's, it's still in my state, but not in the same town. And thankfully, it was just a day later, like, oh, wait, sorry, here you go. But already, I was waiting... Like, 15 days longer than I should have. But most of the time was fine. For the most part. Although, even then, I think it was the last of the books I ordered. That was when Ruby came in. I think it was a significant amount of time. It was like a few days later. But yes, uh, Almighty. Oh, sorry, not, it's not Almighty. It's the, it's the other book. Uh, the Warning. Edward LaRoche. And as I, as I spoiled to you guys, the next one is Almighty. Um, again. So, it's Almighty... The Third World America Saga, Part 1, by LaRoche. And it's amazing, says Patton, Al Patton Oswald. It's pretty cool. So this is the artwork. This one is a, has to do with the biker, biker gang. Uh, biker gang kidnaps this woman. So I, I don't know when sci-fi comes in, but I, I think it's it takes place in sci-fi. Because, um, again, the... The mega comparison, yeah. So the year is twenty ninety eight, so it's in the far future. Action, adventure, slash, slash science fiction. But the whole biker gang reminded me of the bike riders. So now I, I, I really want to watch the bike riders. 
I mean, that's when we, the next movie I see, because I, I already saw Inside Out too, and that was the other one I wanted to see more than. You know, it's getting, you know how you have, you have your, like, your top five movies I really want to see? I think you have a top five. It's Inside Out 2, um, Bike Riders, Quiet Place Day 1. I have it right here. I should have it. Nah, it's too far away. It's too, I had to go to the actual. But I, I have a lot of movies I want to see, but at least three. I've already seen one of them, so two more. I'm not gonna see this this, this pickle me four. That will be one of those times where I go and see my own movie when they go and see theirs. That was that's nice to do. I I, I find that fun. I find that fun. It's always a fun thing to do. I did that, I did that with Challengers most recently. Everyone else went to go see the Fall Guy. And I was like, eh. I know we should support stuntmen, but it bombed either way. I believe or well, underperformed, not significantly. And I went and I, I went to go see Challengers. Um, and then during the winter break, uh, they went to go see the last, uh, oh, this one collects one through, five, uh, one through six, right? One through five. One through five. And it's all five issues, too. It wasn't a, oh, next two issues are on the Kindle. Nope. Sorry, I'm just going to see the artwork again. Uh, if I mean, didn't. They went to go see, uh, oh, what was it? It was a bird one. Migration. I went to go see Iron, uh, Iron, Iron Giant, Iron Claw. Siphon Volume 2. Now, I got in Volume 1 back in May, and almost, if I got in another, uh, gift card from Knowledge Panel, or, like, or, or from someone else, um, then I would've gotten this book. But I didn't. Actually, along with the next book, too, I, I would've gotten it with. But I obviously did not. Actually, I wouldn't have done that. Well, if I, if I, got, if I got it later, if I got it in the mail, and if I got it at start, start of June. But I didn't, obviously. And I was, I was going to do, th do the thing where I go, oh, I got this one last year at this time. Ha, 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 very funny. But I didn't. Uh, but whatever. This one collects one through four of Siphon to Volume 2. Now, usually I don't show the artwork of Volume 2. I'll just wait for Volume 1. I'll, I'll just do it. <laughs> Maybe Volume 1. I'll just do it for Volume 1. But because I didn't get Volume 1 this, this month, I'm just going to show the artwork. Siphon Volume 2. Something I, I know nothing about, but... I still wanted it. Now this one is written by Motion Ashraf in Arish Anakta or Akanda. Penciled by Thomas Helglin and Inks issue four. Uh, Inks Masafa Musa for issue one and issue two and issue three and issue four. Oh, uh, they have it. No, they have it. Okay. And then I'm sorry. I'm just getting tired. This is a lot of people. A lot of people behind are responsible for creating and. Uh, c committing to Scythe of Volume 2. Uh, the, the main thing is that Patrick Meany did Volume 1. He has not come back with Volume 2. He directed the Image Comics documentary. This one is not the one I was talking about before, but this one's the Image Revolution. I have not seen that one. I want to see it now. I, 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 can't, I can't keep meaning to put it on my radar, but I think I should put it on my radar now. So the next one up that I would have gone along with this back in June is Edenwood. This is the other one that I don't have er everything that Tony X. Daniel has done for Image Comics but, however, comma it's one of those things and, and, and I mean written, not drawn. Uh, written and that's because the other series first of all like, it's so old that Amazon doesn't even know what volume is what. And they're like, uh, this one it's, it's a comic, it's written by this person we don't know what it collects. We don't know what volume it actually is. It was very strange. Um, so I didn't get that. And then I found out, and I'm glad I did not just, just been like, okay, there's two volumes. All right, let's go. Yeah. Because there's at least four. And there's 26 issues total, plus four issues. I don't think I already did the math for the last four. Plus a four-issue miniseries. So at the very least, there's 30, at the most, there's 30 issues of that series by Tony Daniels. There's no way four volumes collect all of that. Because it's only 112, according to Amazon, each volume was only 112 pages. Which that means that it collects, at the most, five issues. But more than likely, just four. So I was like, let's go by the Eric Stevenson rule and just get this book. Because I wanted this book for a long time. And the only reason why I didn't get it back when I was going to get it was for that reason. Yes, Tony S. Daniel. And that's why I added... Oh, actually, I, I haven't said it yet. Never mind. Um, here is the artwork. 
work for even when. Nice fantasy comic. I am a huge fan of fantasy. Dystopian horror fantasy. There you go. You met her. Oh, this one comic's 1 through 5, right? Alright. Yep, 1 through 5. And what's really weird is because this is a... This is $10. One of their uh, volume ones are 10 bucks. Another reason why I like buying so much from Image Comics is that because, some, is that because sometimes their volume ones are $10. And that, like, automatically is a reason for me to get it. Like, already, I'm getting it. Um, what's really weird about that one is it seems like volume... Uh, when I was checking on the uh his image comics page which did not have the other series um that's why i was gonna get back in the day because i didn't see the other series um but i'd seen that and uh i checked issue four and it's shown on the image comics website and it said four of five so maybe it is only five issues there's no issue there's no news on an issue six yet and that's another reason why games comics from Image Comics because it's because you can get some most of the, most of the time you can get caught up very easily. DC Comics is a pipe dream unless the series gets canceled, got canceled, and it's, or it's a mini series. You're SOL for the most part getting caught if you want to get caught up if, as a trade waiter because they're at least one volume behind. Something they are one volume behind, like they have like one through six and seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 are already out, and 12 is coming out that next week, like next week after Volume 1 comes out. They're so far behind. And of course, Volume 1 is a hardcover, so you're always paying more than you should be. Very annoying. Next one up is Petrol Head, written by Rob Williams, with artwork done by Pi Part. Oh, who does the artwork? Oh, so it looks like Tony S. Daniel did everything. No, I'm sorry, Colors for Issue 1 for Edenwood is. Dre David Ramos. Then for the rest of the series, it's Leonardo Pacchiotti is the colorist. Okay. And then for Petrol Head, the writer is Rob Williams, and it's drawn by Pi Parr, who's also the colorist, right? Art, oh, there's graphic design. Yep. It is Pi Parr. And this is one of those books that I don't usually get. Uh, e for everyone comics usually because it's just when I'll say I'm like a whole bunch of them and have like a whole it, it's just a weird thing in my mind so I always think image is older audiences one of those things uh, but this because it's the only it was the last Rob Williams book I needed for my collection I was like you know what why not get it it's just one of those things I, I just feel like I'd be talked down to when I read it like, I feel like I'm, I'm not gonna get Ninjago you know maybe if it was M rated I'd be like okay let's see how Lego Ninjago is M rated why it's M rated and if, and if it's not a typo, or a mistake, misprint. How would they do that, though? Would they, like, you had, you had to think of the audience. Yeah, okay, people who grew up with the series, fine, but other than that, I don't know. Obviously, I, I like to see it, because, you know, I'm for sure, but... But and it's not like, like I wouldn't pass down a series that otherwise seems very interesting to me because it's only E for everyone. But it it is just one of those things. It just it, it, it piques my interest a bit less. And I guess, I guess because Image Comics I automatically think is older audiences and that they go the extra mile, you know. Now I want to show a good. There we go. So right here, this I'm going to show you our artwork again because I, I almost forgot to mention this. She reminded me a lot of Lunella Lafayette, and so did her father. Reminded me a lot of her father. So like, I immediately that's another E for everyone. Calling. Okay, so Marvel says T for team, but if it was Image, they'd say E for everyone. Um, it is E for everyone, and it's there's no doubt about that. Um, but it reminded me a lot of Moon Girl. Like, like, that's kind of funny. And I was, I was reading it along. I was rereading it at a time that I in this series that I first found out about the series. Yes, Petrol Head. Well, I saw the trailer at least. The, and the thumbnail showed that that panel I just showed you. Next one up is not the last Brian Bugalala book I need, but the last trade that's an outlet. That's the last one I need thus far if I'm thinking tra going by trade, and that is Midlife. Or how to be a hero, or how to hero at fifty, written by Brian Bucolato. The artwork here is done by 
Stefano Simeone. And that's it. I guess you also see colorist too. I guess you also colorist too. Unless the colorist is Frank Bugalato. So he, he did the colors for, I believe, Cannibal. Nope. I know, I know, I know at the very least, he did the colors for the first volume of Flash. Flash one. At the very least. Now, this one started out being $10. I think because I think it's because it's only a six issue miniseries, like all six issues, um, thus far, that they then added the and, and, and they didn't made it sixty nine nine. Or Amazon had it wrong. But this is one of those series that was only eleven ninety nine. Like I paid twelve bucks for this, but the list price was sixteen sixteen bucks. I'm I'm rounding up. Uh, which is like a Amazon should do that more often. Like why do I have to pay sixteen ninety nine? Sorry, sixteen thirty three, uh, for siphon when it should be on sale. Like you're you're basically saying go to the con shop. Go to the con shop if it's sometimes sometimes it would be if I if I could drive myself it would be if I, if I could actually drive it would be a lot easier for me to just drive myself to the comic book store. Okay, I know I am prattling on so much. Let's get let's get on to it. No no more no more. Um. Yeah, one through six. No more tangents. Yeah, if I, if I, could, if I could drive myself, I would just do that. And just get the books there. Cause it's a, at that point, why wait two days or one day, even one day? And here is the... Actually, I just I, I didn't notice the artwork, didn't I? Yeah, here's the artwork. Oh, the reason why I don't show... I'm like, showing the uh, artwork of volume two is because I don't want, I don't want any, spoil, any spoilers to be shown. All right, two more, two more series. One of them is two volumes, though. This one got a little bit damaged right here, and this is why I don't mind doing these very good. This is a new copy, but yet there's there's more blemishes technically than on the use very good book. And this one is Axe Send Volume One. The world revol revolves around you. Now this one I got for seven dollars, seven dollars, not third party seller, but it's shipped by Amazon, not a third party seller in general. But shipped and sold by Amazon. It's, it's, it's kind of funny is that they'll have comics like completely hidden. But I'll do it every now and then. I'm trying to break even because I, I had a fifteen dollar I had a fifteen dollar gift card, and I wanted to get uh, petrol head. Not petrol head. I wanted to get uh, I had petrol head. I want to get Edenwood. I was like, let's get something else with it. Let's do the and, I, and what I will do is I'll I'll go by by Prime shipping as a filter I put on the filter of Prime shipping and lowest to highest. For image comics, nice thing, nice thing to do. I uh, sometimes we get single issues that I'll never, I probably never get, but you can get some pretty cheap comics. The only reason I got, I got Hell City was because it was like five dollars, I think, or seven dollars. I don't know, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, actually, it was seven dollars. Yeah, XN Volume One. This one's written by Shane Davis, who did the artwork for Superman in Year, uh, not Year One, Superman Earth One. But and he, and he does the art too. If I'm not mistaken, but it's colored by someone else. Yes, he's writer, penciler, but inker is Michelle Delecky. Colorist is Maury Hollowell. And here is the artwork. And it collects one through five, I believe. Of, yep, of the entire series. It is, it is a mini series. And it wasn't one of those things where this, is the, this wasn't the only thing Simon Gain, you know, it's the only thing that, not Simon Gain, uh, Shane Davis had done for Image. No, he's the only thing he did. Because sometimes I'll find ones that are like, oh my god, it's five bucks, but the author has done like several series. I'm like, eh. Or the series has several volumes. I'm like, eh. And then they, I, I was going to get one series. I'm like, you know what, Look, let's, I'll, get, I'll pay for the, uh, I'll, I'll steal with third party seller. But I believe one was out of print, like infamously out of print. I was like, nope, not doing that. Not even going by the, not even for that. Will I go by the, uh, Eric Stevenson rule? All right. So next one up is last series is Freshman Volume One and Freshman Volume Two, written by Carol Stekbakov. No, Hugh Sturbakov. But co-created by Seth Green, the voice of Chris Griffin on Family Guy, and I believe the creator of 
actually, I'm pretty sure, I'm 99% positive, the creator of Robot Chicken. Very, very significant uh, person in my cartoon watching life. Here's the artwork. So, if you guys, especially everything I had, I got this month, um, you guys can, you guys have my permission to check out right now if you guys want to see what the comics were. <clears throat> Uh, mind you, my complete, mind you, my complete, uh, June haul, which will be the next video. I'm just going to do, uh, like the first, I uh, first I'll say, here's all the comics, and then I'll talk about all of them individually. But this will probably be longer than my actual comic haul, my complete June haul, because of how much I want to talk about each book. And because I'm, because I'm doing these back to back, I'm like, I'm going to say everything I just said, or am I going to remember even? Yeah. yeah, Seth Green co-created it. I think it's one of those, um, Berserker situations where it's just the author, it's just a big name putting his name on it, so it gets more sales and everything like that. But he didn't actually write it, you know. But hey, it's, it's I technically have all of what I believe all of what Seth Green did for Image Comics. I had I not double check that. Pretty sure I do have everything. We'll, we'll look after. That's the main reason why I got this book too. No, actually, another reason why I got this book is because I, for, I kept seeing. At my uh, one of the comic shops, I, a comic shop I used to go to, in their clearance section, I kept seeing Freshman Two, and for whatever reason, I I connected this with being a Mark Millar book, in from Marvel too. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it was a way of printing that was written by Mark Millar, or was, or was by was Marvel Comics, or it was a series called Freshman by Mark Millar, or maybe it was the same day I had, or same time I had seen. Marvel 1985, a book I really wish I got in by Mark back then by Mark Millar because there was another one. I, there was another one I was like, is that Image? I thought that was Image. And then uh, Legion was talking about it the other day, and because I, I I didn't know it was a Marvel 1985, I just saw 1985. But I'm gonna get that book. It looks very interesting. But it's not. I'm, it's not at my local comic shop. I'll have to, I'll have to wait till it's on sale. And also, it's so old that. Volume one just has this top cow thing. Nowhere does it show Image Comics. It shows it in the in the inside, but it doesn't show it there. Oh my God! Does it even show it here? There you go. On the, on the back it shows it. Yeah, with a lot of older older uh, top cow books, they just said top cow on, on, on the spine. Where is the collects? I'm I, I know it's six issues per volume, so it's vol volume one is freshman one one through six, and freshman two is freshman two one through six. But there was an additional. Oh, freshman yearbook is in here. That's cool. So that was one of the ones I didn't. Um, I thought wouldn't even be there because they they have like a they do like a table of contents like and how you would how it would be and like your schedule would look like uh, in school I went the whole aesthetic right here I think it's pretty cool but nowhere it's kind of hard to see where it collects maybe here we'll show it yep issues one through six and the freshman year book are collected in here and the one that I think I got I don't think was freshman year book but I get again you guys can skip out if you don't want to if you just want to know what the comics were. Which is padding out time. Oh my god, it's already 43 minutes. I, I gotta hurry up. I, I gotta get my books too. Even though, even though I'm gonna be helping out my dad with, home, uh, with homework, with yard work, I still wanna read some before he's before he comes back from his appointment. Where is it? Freshman, freshman. It's up here, isn't it? No, so, so, summer vacation special, damn it. Alright, so let's see, let's see, look quick, look quick, look quick. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. No, just one through six. Sorry, I can check here. Your dog barking. Come on, hurry up, hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, it's so hard to see. I'm gonna say no. Yeah, Seth Green, cool. The end.